most important thing about tax treaties is that they totally change the domestic tax rules in the Internal Revenue Code. So what you think are the normal tax rules, a tax treaty can override that and it can result in tremendous advantages depending on the provision. There is about 60 tax treaties between the United States and other countries around the world. Believe it or not, there's only five tax treaties in the whole Western Hemisphere. <laughs> Canada, Jamaica, Barbados, Venezuela, and Mexico. That is it. We, we don't have any more. So the other 50 plus treaties are all on the, in the Eastern Hemisphere, in, in Europe and in Asia. What happens is the, <clears throat> there's a treaty that's signed by the United States and another country. And even when it's signed, it's not, not effective yet. Then they have, what they have to do is go through a ratification process. And the U.S. Senate ratifies it on the U.S. side. Somebody in the other country ratifies it on their side. Then it goes into effect. But like there's a treaty between the U.S. and Brazil. It was signed in 1967. I mean, it's a full, complete treaty. It was never ratified. So here we are almost 50 years later. We still don't have a treaty with Brazil, and they're still talking about it. Uh, but what happens is the tax treaties <coughs> are, are issued with certain provisions, then if they want to modify them, they, issue, they do what's called a protocol. And the protocols also have to be ratified by the other country as well as the United States. And that's how the treaties get amended from time to time. Now, uh, to take advantage of the tax treaties, uh, you know, you need to look at the provisions of the treaty and, and how they override the basic tax code and you also, also, you always need to look at the LOB provision because the LOB, the limitation on benefits provision, always determines whether you can actually access the treaty or not because they've realized that a lot of taxpayers who really aren't entitled to treaty benefits because say you've got a treaty between the U.S. and the U.K. and somebody from the Bahamas wants to use that treaty. They, they don't want you to be able to use that treaty if, if you're in the Bahamas because you're not in the country that's party to the treaty. So they have what these are called these LOB provisions, limitation of benefits provisions, to prevent access to the treaty. So that's one of the first things you want to look at is, do I have access to the treaty? Or if I'm using a company, can I structure the ownership so that I get access to the treaty? Um, individual taxpayers are impacted by the income tax treaty, as well as the estate and gift tax treaty and by the totalization agreement, the, the social security tax agreement. So that individuals are impacted by a lot of these tre treaties. It's not by any means limited to companies. If I had to go through the common mistakes with tax treaties, um, you know, I guess, I guess the, one of the biggest mistakes is just not being aware of certain provisions. Um, and there's like specific clauses that, you know, say that if you're a U.S. citizen, Certain parts of the tax treaty may not apply to you, so a lot of people aren't aware of that. They see a provision and, you know, if they've, if they've made it to the point where they realize there's a treaty and realize it could actually help their client, they may not realize that it's not available to a citizen. It's only available to a non-citizen. Um, there's also filings that are required. So if you claim a treaty benefit, a benefit under a U.S. tax treaty, you're actually required to file a form and attach it to your tax return. And that gets missed a lot, and unfortunately, like a lot of, a lot of tax forms, it carries a significant penalty with it if you miss that. So, um, and, and, or if you fill it out incompletely. Um, so that's one of the things we help our, our clients with. There are times when our clients, even, even our U.S.-based clients, can take advantage of a tax treaty between two foreign jurisdictions. For instance, if they have, you know, if they own companies that are located in two foreign jurisdictions, and maybe one of those jurisdictions doesn't even have a tax treaty with the United States. But the two, two jurisdictions both have tr treaties with the U.S., so we can um, take advantage of those two companies, the, tax, the foreign tax treaties, even though maybe the U.S. tax treaty is not applicable. Absolutely. Yeah, for instance, if you've got a parent company in Hungary and, and we've got a subsidiary in the United States and, and we make some kind of payment to that Hungarian company, then depending on the type of payment, it could easily be subject to a 30% withholding tax if you just follow the U.S. tax code. But if you pull the treaty in, suddenly that 30% tax rate, U.S. tax rate, could go down to zero. 
at Berkowitz Pollock Brand, we have a full working knowledge uh, between the different members of the international tax group of, of, of all the tax treaties. So that's about 60 income tax treaties between the United States and other countries around the world. That's about 15 estate and gift tax and inheritance tax treaties with different countries. Um, also shipping agreements, air and shipping agreements, uh, which there's probably 100 plus or minus of those types of agreements. And then there's also social security agreements, which are called totalization agreements. We have about 20 of those. So we have a full working knowledge. We work with these treaties on a day-by-day a, on a -day basis.